The movie begins in 1986 at Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Local hairdresser Olga Savastina begins her duties in the salon on a busy day when she reluctantly reconnects with her former lover, 30-year-old Pripyat firefighter Alexei Karpushin, who has come in for a haircut with his friends. Later, he tries to woo her after work by blocking the bus she rides on until she agrees to go out on a date. The pair quickly rekindle old feelings as they spend the whole afternoon together. He lovingly drops her off at her apartment in the evening when he grows persistent with the cake he bought, forcing Olga to let him inside her home to meet her 10-year-old son, Alexei. After getting acquainted, Alexei becomes suspicious about his parentage, prompting Olga to reveal he is her son's father. To make up for lost time, he insists on taking her and the boy to a picnic in Kiev the next day, despite Olga's day shift. Two weeks pass, and Alexei is celebrating with his fireman colleagues due to his reassignment to Kiev. The men joyfully hose him down with water for fun, though it goes too far that he locks himself in the truck. Later, the colonel, Sergei, and his brother, engineer Valera, help Alexei pack his things before leaving, with both men preparing to celebrate in his home for his farewell party. After bribing the supervisor with perfume, he gets permission to borrow her car for 24 hours. Alexei drives to Olga's neighborhood and sees her son playing with his friends. He surprises the boy with a brand new Lomo film camera. He reveals that Olga had been disappointed with him for not appearing at the picnic. Still, he reasons that his work prevented him from seeing them that day. Later, Alexei returns feeling downcast despite the rousing party with his brigade. He continues drinking his sorrows away while the rest enjoy the conversation and eat the feast. Unable to resist the urge, he returns to Olga's apartment to visit them, though he is visibly intoxicated. After sending the young boy outside to ride his bike, Olga resents him for his broken promises and rejects his advances. Alexei admits lying to his co-workers about getting reassigned to another workplace, as he intends to relocate with Olga and her son to start fresh as one big happy family. Though seemingly persistent, she dismisses his plans, believing they are fine without him. He leaves dissatisfied as Olga sobs on her lonesome. Later in the evening, little Alexei and his friends are biking along the road to the power plant and stop near one of the buildings to film the area with a recently gifted camera. However, as they get closer, they become shocked to see a massive explosion erupt, causing the establishment to engulf in flames. Alexei records the chaos as his friends scurry away from the scene, leaving him alone to fend for himself. Around 5 a.m. the next day, Alexei is urged to extinguish the fire at the station, as his colleagues are intoxicated from partying and have disconnected their phones. Visibly disappointed about postponing his trip to Kiev, he hurriedly drives to the plant when he is stopped by dead birds falling from the sky. To his horror, he sees fire spreading through the forest and an enormous toxic cloud of smoke in the distance, letting him realize there has been a gas leak. He hails a ride with one of the passing fire trucks and heads to the plant. They arrive at the site and immediately attempt to douse the flames with water as more emergency responders appear to help. He sees his colleague, Tigran, who has been exposed to high radiation levels, as he reveals that reactor number 4 has exploded. He is taken inside an ambulance, where first responders administer an iodine thyroid block to alleviate his poisoning. As the fire intensifies, Alexei sees more of his men growing weary as the radiation slowly takes effect in their bodies. An exposed Sergei tells him their squadmate Yuri is stuck on the rooftop, prompting him to climb the upper level despite passing through burning hallways. With his colleagues rescued, he urges the paramedics to accompany them, getting permitted to drive their vehicle when one of their medics bleeds through his nose. They arrive in the emergency room. Sergei and his mates are led to a jam-packed hallway filled with wards full of exposed individuals. A nurse checks his eyes and finds nothing too serious, showing he has survived the initial exposure. The men remove their clothes as the staff collects them to be burnt in the furnace. As a precautionary measure, Alexei is injected with a sedative and placed in a cleaner ward to recuperate. At the same time, others have been forcibly put down after too much exposure. By morning, he awakens to find a Kiev radiologist, Dina, checking his condition. He looks seemingly healthy despite the initial exposure. His colleague, Nikolai, stands by the window to warn his wife not to come to the hospital as other families anxiously gather outside, wanting answers. Later, Alexei is forced to accompany Dina and the lead physician to a military base, where officials discuss the cause of the power plant explosion. Through a video and surveillance photos, Comrade Stison reveals that the reactor core is in critical condition, which may be potential for an even greater catastrophe if it triggers a secondary steam explosion of their large coolant water reservoir. The radiation could reach the upper atmosphere and spread throughout all of Europe. Stison then recommends Alexei for the fire service detail due to his prior experience in fire inspections. The goal is to open the sluice gates manually under the reactor through the pipe conduit corridor. Alexei, Valera, and the rest of the staff look hesitant to undergo the likely suicide mission. 
An official, Tropin, offers to take them to Switzerland for treatment in a specialist radiation clinic for their efforts, with the most outstanding volunteers given private Moscow apartments. With no other recourse, the group discusses the plan as they witness some volunteers have begun training for an underwater dive in the swimming area. Not wanting to risk innocent lives, Stison, military diver Boris, and Valera accept the mission to infiltrate level 7. At the same time, Alexei denies them any fire support. As he leaves the building, an announcement from the City Council of People's Deputies is heard, prompting all citizens to evacuate the town of Pripyat and board the transport vehicles to get relocated. Alexei rushes to Olga's apartment only to find his son suffering from radiation exposure. He and Olga rush him to an ambulance. Still, the doctor asks them to board the bus to Hospital No. 6 in Kiev for anyone with radiation sickness. On the way there, the little boy becomes increasingly ill, compelling Alexei to leave them with money and return to accept the task at the power plant. Later, he inspects the map of the reactor's corridors and requests an airlift to the site to join Styson's group. Looking above the helicopter, Alexei sees the devastation caused by the explosion's aftermath. Once at the plant, Stylin reviews his fleshed-out shorter path to the water reservoir. Boris is initially apprehensive of the firemen, believing he is only helping them to earn a reward. Later, Alexei calls Olga while she looks after their son in the hospital. He promises to take care of his radiation poisoning treatment and relocate with them to a house by the sea. Still, Olga does not trust him and hangs up. He then asks Commander Tropin to allow his son to get the Swiss treatment before he assists in securing the reactor. He agrees, stipulating that Alexei will be transferred to a Moscow or Kiev hospital instead. At the same time, his son can go to Switzerland in his place. With everything settled, the fireman rejoins the team, wearing special suits and diving gear as they prepare to swim the increasingly hot water under the reactor. Before suiting up, Dina assures him of caring for his son as they proceed with his treatment. The group splits into teams, with Alexei, Nikita, Valera, Stylin, and Boris securing the line and cutting a hole in the metal floor to measure the water's temperature and toxicity. Afterward, they dive underwater and swim to the opposite section filled with pipes and valves. They attempt to close them, only for the pressure to exceed, which allows Nikita to get sprayed with toxic gas. They leave him to recuperate while the rest continue to the inner corridors. Valera has a panic attack upon seeing their colleague's predicament, only exacerbated by Boris punching him in the stomach. Alexei calms him down, as Valera reports Sergei died in Kiev from radiation sickness. After helping him stand, the group walks further into the pipeline as the temperature increases. Suddenly, scalding hot water fills the area, injuring Valera and causing Boris to swim and recover their cable line. With less than six minutes left, they reach another watery stairwell where Alexei carries Valera over the junction box to hook the cable with Boris stays behind. With the conduit set up, the tester activates for a moment and then shuts off after a few seconds. Boris believes they must swim underwater and manually open the water valve. They return to the upper level, only to find Nikita missing. Growing tired and weary, Boris becomes delusional and leaves the group to locate the water valve. Valera and Alexei chase him, warning that his actions may lead to another reactor explosion. He is soon rescued from attempting to burn himself alive and rushed outside the plant to an ambulance, but he dies. Along the way to the hospital, Dina informs Alexei the government has sent the military as liquidators to secure the reactor. Elsewhere, Styson berates Commander Tropin for trying to cover up the disaster by sacrificing innocent lives. The following morning, Alexei awakens in the ward, checking in with his surviving colleagues. Valera convinces himself to make a second attempt to drain the reservoir since none of the soldiers sent to the reactor know the inside workings of the area. Meanwhile, Olga busies herself by shaving the patients' heads and discarding their fallen hair exposed to radiation. Later, after cleaning up, she becomes hysterical upon seeing Alexei, chastising him for abandoning them during their time of need. As he embraces her, he tells her that Alex can now board a plane for a charter flight to Switzerland for the treatment. By the later afternoon, the pair see him before he is transported to the cargo plane with other victims. After a tearful goodbye, they return to the apartment. Alexei tries to ease Olga's mind from worrying about their son's safety in another country. Though they kiss, she hesitates to restart their relationship. The next day, Alexei leaves her a note saying he is returning to the reactor's depths. Later, with the second team set up, he pairs up with Valera and begins their second attempt, descending to the lower level submerged in hot water. Though the duo get scalded by the intense temperatures underwater, they courageously swim through the pipeline and reach the main valve. However, they find turning it with their bare hands difficult, prompting them to use tools. They loosen the valve with some effort as the men waiting outside notice the water is draining. As they leave the area, Valera gets hick on the pipes, so Alexei pulls him out in vain. Accepting his fate, 
the engineer cuts off the line to free Alexei. Still, instead of escaping, he swims toward his friend, refusing to abandon him. Eventually, rescuers recover their heavily irradiated bodies from the reactor. Dina allows Olga to see Alexei wearing a hazmat suit in the isolation ward at the hospital. However, after seeing his damaged appearance, Olga removes her garb, embracing him until he dies. Three months later, entire families gather at the airfield to reunite with their loved ones. Olga welcomes back her son, visibly looking well after undergoing rigorous radiation treatment in Switzerland. The movie ends as the Chernobyl survivors continually share their harrowing ordeal worldwide. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.